Okay, so in this video we want to look at um, solving equations that involve logarithms. In the next video we're also going to be looking at solving equations, but they will be exponential equations where we want to use logarithms to solve. Um, so there's a couple of different strategies we can use when we have equations that involve logs. And the first of those is to make uh, this transition, which hopefully we're becoming quite familiar with. So if we have a relationship involving a log, we can flip that around into an exponential relationship instead. And that's important if the unknown that we're trying to solve for is inside the log. Because when we change it from a log equation to an exponential equation, that, that the thing inside the log gets freed up and then we can solve for x in this case. So let's just have a look at um, a couple of examples. This might also require us to use our log laws to simplify things before we can make this transition from a log equation to an exponential equation. Okay, so three times log base four to the power of x, uh, sorry, log base four of x um, is equal to nine. Okay, so there's two different ways that we could do this. One is much simpler than the other, but I find that students often have an instinct to do the more complicated one. The more complicated method would be to think, okay, well, I've got to put this three up into the power here, and then so you're going to have log base four of, um, sorry, of x cubed is equal to nine. And now we convert from a log to an exponential expression, um, which means that we're going to have four to the power of nine is equal to x cubed. Okay, so that's a much more complicated thing to solve because I don't know off the top of my head what four to the power of nine is. And I would probably um, focus on kind of working with my index laws and thinking, okay, well that's actually four cubed cubed equals x cubed. And so when I take the cube root, x will be four cubed, which is 64. But actually the much more efficient way to go about doing this is rather than putting that 3 into the power, let's just divide both sides of the equation by 3. So log base 4 of x is equal to 9 divided by 3, which is 3, and then straight away when we convert to an exponential equation, 4 to the power of 3 is equal to x, and so x is equal to 64. So usually much, much easier to divide both sides of the equation, um, if you can, than to put something up into a power. Okay, part B. Um, again, so what you're looking for before you can make that transition from the log equation to the exponential equation is a single log equal to a, equal to something else. Okay, so you don't want more than one log on the left hand side or, or right, it doesn't matter what side it's on. Um, in this case, we're, we're ready straight away to convert um, to an exponential equation. So if log base 2 of 3x minus 1 is equal to 5, that means that 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 3x minus 1. And then we can solve the equation. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. That equals 3x minus 1. We add 1 to both sides and we um, divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to 11. Okay, part C. Here we've got two logs. So the first thing we need to do is actually get those together. So we're subtracting logs with the same base. So we know from our log laws in the previous video, that means we can divide. So this is going to be 10x divided by x plus 2. Log base 3 of 10x divided by x plus 2 equals 2. And now that we've got the single log equal to... Um, a number, we can convert it to an exponential relationship. So it's 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 10x on x plus 2. Sorry, I should have left us a bit more room here. So this is 9 equals 10x on x plus 2. So I want to get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 2. So that is 9 times x plus 2 equals 10x. We'll expand those brackets. 9x plus 18 equals 10x. Subtracting 9x 18 equals x. All right, so therefore x is 18. Sorry, it's a bit illegible. Let's go again. Okay, so that's our first option. If we can just simply get it, if we can rewrite it as a log, single log equal to something and then convert it to an exponential um, relationship, that's one method we can use. The other method we can use is... Um, similar to what we do when we solve exponential equations. So you'll remember when we solve exponential equations, we focus on getting a single um, power equal to another power, and then we can equate the powers. It, the same is true with logs. If we can write a single log equal to another log, both with the same base, then we can simply equate. If log base A of X is the same as log base A of Y, the only way that that is true is if X is equal to Y. So focusing on writing both sides as a single log with the same base um, is another strategy we can use in solving equations with logs. So let's have a look at these. So we've got log base 3 of X equals half times log base 3 of 1 16th. So we want to be able to um, equate the things inside the logs. We just need to deal with this half out the front here first. So let's pop that up into the power. 
So this is log base 3 of x is equal to log base 3 of um, 1 16th to the power of a half. And now we've got a single log with a base of 3 on both sides of the equation and so we can equate the things inside the logs. x must be equal to, now the power of a half is a square root, so it's a square root of 1 16th. Um, and then uh, square root of 1 is 1 and square root of 16 is 4, so x is equal to a quarter. Um, okay, part B. Again, let's focus on expressing both sides of the equation as a single log. So we're going to need our log laws here. Now the left-hand side, we're adding two logs, but again, we've got the two in the front here. So let's put that up in the power first. Now on the right-hand side, we're not adding two logs. So let's think about how can we express one as a log with a base of five? And hopefully we recognize that log base five of five is one. So we want to do that. So the left-hand side, we've got log base five of two x plus log base 5 of, that'll be 2 squared, which is 4. So that's moving that, that 2 up into the power. On the right-hand side, we've got log base 5 of x plus 3 minus, and 1 is the same as log base 5 of 5. Okay, let's combine the logs on each side of the equation. So we're adding logs on the left-hand side of the equation, which means we can multiply those two things. So 2x times 4 is 8x. And on the right-hand side, log base 5 of, we we're subtracting two logs so we can divide. So that's x plus 3 on 5. And now that we've got a single log on each side with the same base, we can equate the things inside the logs. And so 8x must be equal to x plus 3 over 5. Let's multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of the fraction. So that is 40x equals x plus 3. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So 39x equals 3 dividing both sides by 39. So 3 divided by 39, which simplifies to 1 on 13. Okay, um, so sometimes while there might be logs in the equation, it doesn't necessarily make it a logarithmic equation. Okay, so it's only, um, it's only really going to be a log equation if the unknown thing is inside the log. So for example, here in part A, we've got x times log base 5 of 4 equals 3. Now remember, log base 5 of 4 that's just a number, okay? So you've just got a number times x equals three. So there's no, you don't need to do anything with the log. You simply need to, all that's happening to the x is it's being multiplied by a number. The opposite of that is to divide by a number. X isn't being logged, <laughs> for want of a better way of saying that. So um, it's simply gonna be x equals three divided by log base five of four. Easy as that. Same with this one here, okay? This time you've got a number times x plus x equals 1. So solving an equation, we need to first of all combine together those like terms. So the way we do that is to recognize that on the left hand side, x is a common factor. Taking out the x is going to leave us with log base 3 of 8. Sorry. Log base 3 of 8 uh, plus 1 equals 1. And so then we can um, divide both sides by log base 3 of 8 plus 1. Now we might also focus on simplifying the log base 3 of 8 plus 1 into a single log. So I might do that before I divide it. So thinking about the fact that log base 3 of 8 plus 1 is log base 3 of 3. And so therefore this is x times log base 3 of adding logs. We multiply the things inside the log. So 8 times 3 is 24. And so then to solve uh, for x, we're going to divide by log base 3 of 24. Now there are different ways that, that that answer might be written. If you used your CAS to solve these equations, your CAS only uses logs with a base of something called E, which we'll learn about in the next couple of years. So it will always give you expressions that look very different to what you obtain when doing it by hand. Okay, so your CAS isn't going to be overly helpful to you in the solving of the equation. However, if you're not sure, what you could do, let's just solve this um, part B equation we just did then. So x times um, log base 3, oh, sorry, x times log base 3 of 8 plus x equals 1. Solve that for x. Oh, it does give me this. Sorry, um, I should have given us one where we actually had to undo the log. So let's just go right back up to this. Uh, actually, no, this would be okay as well. It's going to be a bigger issue when we get to the exponential equations. However, if when you solve your CAS, it gives you something that looks different to what you obtained, just get the decimal representation of that and type in what you obtained and get the decimal representation of that. And you might well find that actually it's the same thing. It's just a different way of writing the same thing. Um, that'll come up in other examples we'll look at as we move on. 
Okay, the other thing to be cautious about when you're solving equations that involve logs is your solution might not actually be a valid solution to the equation. So you might be able to algebraically come up with an equation, um, come up with a solution, but it actually might not be a valid solution for the equation. So what we want to do is we want to recall the fact that when we defined exponential functions, remember um, y equals a to the power of x um, is an exponential function as long as a is a positive value that isn't 1. Okay, so the base of the exponent has to be positive and not 1. That restriction continues over to the logs. When we have a log, we don't want to use a, ba a negative base or a, um, a base of 1. Okay, also we don't want a base of 0. So we want positive bases that aren't 1. Um, ideally, it's nice to avoid having decimal and fractional bases too. Um, sometimes some rearrangement can avoid that. Um, so whilst there are some explicit restrictions for the values of a, there are also then some implicit restrictions for the possible values of y. And we've talked about this idea of possible values of y as being the range of the function. So if we have a think about um, this table below, we're just calculating the value of y for various combinations of a and x. Okay, so here I know a has to be positive and it can't be 1, but I've looked at, I'm looking at three different examples where a is a fraction, where a is a small whole number, and where a is a bigger whole number. Okay, and then I want to look at different powers of x, uh, different powers of a. So where x is a, you know, reasonably a, a bigish in terms of powers, um, positive whole number, a small positive whole number, a fraction, a positive fraction, zero, a negative fraction, a negative whole number, and a, a larger negative whole number. So if we have a look at um, with a base of a quarter. Okay, so we're looking at this column here. We look at a quarter to the power of 10, a quarter to the power of 1, a quarter to the power of a half, a quarter to the power of 0, etc. We calculate all these values here. And what we see is when we have a fractional base, regardless of the power, whether it's positive, negative, decimal, uh, fraction, 0, um, the value of y is still always going to be positive. When we have a look at if we use a base of 4, so 4 to the power of 10, 4 to the power of 1, 4 to the power of a half, etc., again, we find it doesn't matter what we do with the power, all of the um, values of y are still positive. And again, um, when we have a base of 100 with the power of 100 to the power of 10, 1, half, 0, etc., we still find, okay, we get a big range in values here, but all of these things are positive numbers. This is tiny, but it's positive still, okay? We also know that from our exponential graphs. We've looked at exponential graphs, so we know when we sketch a to the power of x, um, okay, if a is a fraction, it'll go this way, but it still doesn't. It's still not going to equal zero. Okay, so y can't be equal to zero. So y has to be bigger than zero. That's the range of an exponential function. We've talked about that in our previous topic. So what that means is when we change to a um, log function, so we know when we have this exponential equation y equals a to the power of x, y has to be positive. When we flip that around into the log statement, that restriction on y still holds. So the only way this is going to be true is if y is positive. Okay, so the thing inside the log has to always be positive. Okay, you cannot, if I, let me have a look at my case, if I try and type log base 2 of negative 3, it's a domain error. Okay, we can't put a negative number into a log. Right? So it's not possible. So we need to be mindful of that when we solve equations that involve logs because sometimes it's possible to obtain a solution algebraically that would mean that your original equation had log of a negative number and so therefore it's not a valid solution to the equation. So you do just need to add a little moment of check at the end of having solved your equation. So let's have a look at, I've worked through this example here. So this one here, log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of x plus 2 equals 2. So if we solve this equation, we first focus on getting the um, logs together on the left-hand side using our log law for subtracting. Then we're going to flip it from a log to an exponential equation. So 3 to the power of 2 is equal to this thing. Okay. Um, and then we focus on solving that. So 3 squared is 9, multiplying both sides by x plus 2, um, and we end up getting x equals negative 9 on 4. However, if we go back to our original equation, that would be problematic because log base 3 of negative 9 on 4 isn't defined. Nor is this one because negative 9 on 4 is negative 2.25. Negative 2.25 plus 2 is also still a negative value. So it would be an issue with both of these logs. Even if it was only an issue with one of them, it would still not be a valid solution. Okay, so you see here, if I actually get my CAS to solve this equation, it tells me this is false. It doesn't have a solution. And that's because this only solution we were able to find, uh, find algebraically actually does not fit the original um, domain of the function, 
it's not part of the x possible x values for the equation and so therefore it's not a solution at all and so there aren't any solutions to this equation we can verify that by trying to solve it with the CAS Okay, so when we solve um, equations involving logs, we have to first check the validity of the solutions. So let's have a look at solving this one. So we've got two logs on the left-hand side. Let's focus on combining those together first. So we're adding the logs, so we're, so we're going to multiply the things inside them. So we're going to have log base 2 of x plus 5 times x minus 1. And that has to equal 4. Okay, so then we're going to change it to an exponential. So that is 2 to the power of 4 is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 1. Let's expand out those brackets and work out that 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So this is x squared, uh, that'll be plus 4x minus 5. And take away 16 from both sides, so x squared plus 4x minus 21. Okay, so then we're looking for factors of negative 21 that add up to 4. That'll be um, x, minus, x plus 7, x minus 3. And so we get x equals negative 7 or x equals 3. Okay, however, we need to think back to the original equation. Okay, if x were to equal negative 7, negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So that wouldn't be valid because the solution would be, we'd be we'd, the original equation would mean that we'd had um, log 2 of negative 2. Similarly, um, this second bracket, if x were negative 7, that would be log 2 of negative 8. So that's not possible at all. This bracket here, this tells us, for this log to, to exist, x has to be, x plus 5 has to be bigger than 0. And so that means x has to be bigger than negative 5. For this bracket to exist, or this log to exist, I should say, um, x minus 1 has to be bigger than 0. And so x has to be bigger than 1. Um, so if x has to be both bigger than 1 um, and bigger than negative 5, then uh, x has to be bigger than negative 5 in order for it to be a, a valid solution. Sorry, no, it has to be bigger than 1 in order for it, for it to be a valid solution. It has to fit both of those categories. Um, so we know that x has to be bigger than 1, and so that means that the only solution is x equals 3. And let's just verify that with our CAS. So if we were to solve this, menu 3, 1, we're going to solve our log base 2 of um, x plus 5. Mm, sorry, that side of there, plus log base 2 of x minus 1 and that has to be equal to 4 and we want to solve for x uh, we only get the solution x equals 3 so once you obtain your solutions whether you get 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever it doesn't matter you then need to go back to your original equation and check that those solutions would be valid given the original equation okay so the work today is from a worksheet solving equations involving logarithms